Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing on this beautiful day? I see Becky, Jenny, Mary, and Tracy are here with us. Uh, I am Cal Shepard, and thank you for signing up for the State Library update today. This is a, um, a bi-monthly webinar that I give for anybody who wants to come and find out what's going on at the State Library. Jenny, I'm wonderful. It's getting a little cloudy here. I don't know what it's doing down in Halifax County, but it looks like it may rain here. So, um, I'm getting ready to get started. I'm using a brand new pair of headphones. I have never had headphones before, so if the sound starts to get bad or if you want me to turn up the volume or anything, just let me know, and otherwise I'm going to dig right in. I'm going to start off with some personnel news. And that's what I usually do. And um, I hate to say it, but the State Library did have to take a budget cut. It was somewhat unplanned for. Um, and uh, this was as part of a um, budget cut that the Department of Cultural Resources um, suffered, and it was called a management flexibility. Whoops, I forgot to turn off my phone. Sorry. It was called a management flexibility cut um, for the department, and everybody had to take a share. So that was our share, it was one management position. It became effective July 1. Of course, whenever something like that happens, it sends shockwaves through an organization. And so uh, we're we're getting over it, but it's always hard to take an action like that. Um, we'd like to see uh, other more positive actions, such as these resignations. Now, that may sound strange. I hate to see these two go, Lisa Gregory and Emily Horton, but they are such wonderful employees that they're going to be going out and spreading the the word about the wonderful State Library because um, they have just done a great job while they've been here. They're both in the Digital Information Management Program. We will miss them terribly, but we wish them all the best. Uh, Lisa is moving on to a job at the Digital Heritage Center at UNC, and Emily is going back to school for a PhD, so we're very proud of her. We have also hired a new processing assistant at the Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped for about, oh, I think 15 or 20 minutes on July 1. I think we were fully staffed, or late June, and then boom, that, was, that didn't last long at all. All right, moving on. The State Library Commission is the board, quote unquote, that um, advises the State Library in all of our programs and everything that we do. I'm very thrilled to announce that our chair has been reappointed. This is Harriet Smith from New Hanover County. She is a fireball. She, she is always wanting to do something and is um, actually chairing a State Library Commission committee right now. And you'll hear more about that in a minute. We also have new appointments. Appointments to the commission can be made by the governor, by um, uh, the president pro tem of the Senate, and we also have some people who take office by virtue of their um, other offices that they hold. So the NCLA uh, president is always uh, a member of the commission. Our two new appointments are Penny Sermons, director of the library at Beaufort Community College, and George Wood, the retired county manager from Lincoln County. And we love getting that outside perspective uh, that a retired county manager can bring, and that's what makes them such a valuable resource for the state library. But that's not the only commission we have. We also have the Public Library Certification Commission. And this is the group of people that certifies public librarians. We've had one reappointment to that commission. All of these commissions have terms of varying um, lengths, and when your term is up, then you either get reapplied, or if it's your second time around, we have to look for another new member. Um, we had to say goodbye to our past chair, Sharon Stack, who is the director of the Jacob Mooney Memorial Library um, down in Cleveland County. We're working on filling that chair position 
as you can imagine, there's some paperwork involved. There's some other, um, they make it complicated. So we've got somebody who has said yes verbally, but we just haven't gotten through the paperwork yet to get him on board. I want to say thank you to everybody who serves on these commissions and committees. Here's an example of a committee that is um, important that we that we keep members on, and that's the Youth Services Advisory Committee. And that committee, uh, you can see the members here right there. It has about 13 or 14 members. It's been re reactivated recently because they really didn't have much work to do in the last two years. So um, we've pulled them back together because we expect to be doing a lot more um, activity in the youth services area, maybe even some kind of big statewide project. And so we want to thank these people. You can see their names here on the slide for volunteering and stepping up. All the meetings of the Youth Services Advisory Committee, or the YSAC, will be held by teleconference. So that makes it more, uh, more possible for some people from the uh, far ends of the state to participate. I want to encourage all of you, or any of you who are interested in serving in any capacity whatsoever, to let us know. We can't do what we do without help. I'll just lay it out there. So. We're always very welcoming of any kind of assistance we can provide. Moving on, I'm uh, looking at the state library website, and I got a report a couple of weeks ago, and I thought, well, this is interesting. I need to share this in my update. These are the top 10 web pages on the state library website by number of hits, and from the most hits down to the fewest uh, of the top 10. Obviously, the most hits come to the um, home page, but I think it's very interesting that the very next most popular page is the library-related job openings in North Carolina. I know I'm always referring people to that, both in-state and out-of-state, but uh, it was interesting to see just how popular it is. Of the remaining eight pay, uh, pages or sections of the website, seven of those are genealogy-related. So that's obviously a big interest in North Carolina. I know our genealogy uh, library here in Raleigh gets a lot of um, usage, in fact, more usage than our regular library. So I shouldn't have been surprised by that. And then finally, um, the web page for the library for the blind and physically handicapped is right there in the middle as in popularity. Um, so I just thought I'd share with that with you because that was very interesting. Another fun thing, as long as I'm on the website, is we've got, uh, you all I know are familiar with the NCpedia, which is our online North Carolina encyclopedia. It's incredibly popular with school kids, especially when they're researching the state, bird, dog, all of those state symbols. NCpedia is your go-to place for that. But this was kind of a cool little quiz, and actually it was put together by Lisa Gregory, and she's one of the staff who were just getting ready to leave us. Thank you, Wanda. Wanda's listed the URL there for you. Um, this is a geography quiz for North Carolina. It's got photos, and you have to, you get to pick where you think that place is. It's kind of fun, and it's something, it's so short, quick, easy to do, and accessible that it would be a fun little thing that you could put on your website, you could put on a web page, <clears throat> share the links with the teacher. And um, it was just, I just stumbled across it again and remembered that we had it and thought, well, I'm going to share this because this is also kind of a fun thing that we can let people know about. Um, the summer reading program, this is not the regular library development summer reading program in public libraries. The Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped have their own summer reading program. I thought I'd share this with you because I think it's kind of cool. <clears throat> their final program is going to be a tactile program. So it's actually going to be held here in Raleigh at the Museum of Natural Sciences, and the attendees are going to be able to hold and feel live animals, arrowheads, interesting things that would be um, tactilely interesting. So 
just wanted to share that with you because that was kind of a cool thing about library development, I mean about LBPH. Now I'm going to be moving on to library development. Um, and this is the portion of the state library that works mostly with public libraries. And I'm very, very proud <coughs> of their new blog. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm fighting off allergies, y'all. This new blog has been up a couple of months now. We have about 400 subscribers. We're posting new content about three times a week. We've had 6,000 page views. And um, I think it's been very popular. I've heard from a lot of public library staff that they have signed up for it and have been. Thanks, Jenny. I like it too. And you know what? The staff can. Uh, the great thing about this blog is that any library staff member from anywhere in the library can actually sign themselves up as well. So uh, that saves you from having to forward it to your staff. So if you want to let them know that, feel free. Um, our most popular posts of the, over the first two months that this has been in existence are Camden County's first library opens. So this is um, Camden County has always kind of shared a library with Pasquotank County, and they finally got their own just last month, and it was a big deal. So now there are library facilities, actual buildings, in all 100 counties in North Carolina. Uh, the second most popular post over the last two months has been the new Chapel Hill Public Library, and that had lots of pictures in it, too. So the obvious pattern here is that people are very interested in new libraries. So we are definitely going to keep posting about those. Um, another set of really popular posts are all the calls for nominations or the scholarships or the award information that we share regularly. For example, NCLA award nominations. We recently announced scholarships for <clears throat> two different conferences. Um, we're, uh, LSTA grant announcements, all of those are very popular too. <coughs> Sorry about that. So speaking of LSTA, let's go on and talk about it. You all are going to be getting an overview, a preview of the grant categories for the coming year. This information has not been sent out yet, so it is hot off the press and uh, you'll be the first to know about it. So uh, starting with the easy or the project grants. Yeah, these are the big grants, the project grants. And we've got two categories of these, literacy and lifelong learning and access and digitization. Uh, what is the same from last year? Uh, well, the categories there are the same. The amount of money available is also the same. That's 50000 to 100000 maximum. And the letter of intent is still required on these grants by November 1. And the purpose of that is to save you from pain and trouble putting together a, a whole application on something that might not even be allowed under the federal guidelines for these grants. What is different is that we are not offering a collaboration and innovation category in this coming year. And that's because collaboration is encouraged in every category. So if you're doing a literacy and lifelong learning grant, we encourage you to involve collaboration and innovation as part of that grant. So you don't need a separate grant for that. Um, the second thing that isn't new is that we're trying to spark some more innovation in North Carolina, and we will give you some more information about that in just a second. So let's move on. And if anybody's got a question, just speak up. So we're moving on to the EZ grants. And the EZ grants are these smaller grant categories from $5,000 minimum to $50,000 maximum. And um, here you can see the two categories. And again, these are exactly the same as last year. We've got literacy, lifelong learning, and easy planning. So what is different? Well, we were funding public library technology planning grants. So, and I know it says here planning for technology, but we're actually um, 
not going to be funding planning for technology this coming year because of a, another initiative that's underway in the state called the EDGE Initiative, and that is uh, a nationwide um, project to help public libraries assess their own technology and then uh, make plans, engage in planning to improve their technology. The wonderful uh, side benefit of this project we're hearing from some of the really early pilot libraries is communication with their local government officials. But I'll tell you more about the North Carolina effort. We have um, pilot libraries participating in the EDGE project in North Carolina right now. So here comes the new stuff. Okay, This is the new and exciting stuff. Uh, these are two new categories that have been suggested by the LSTA Advisory Committee. Just like I was talking about how much we rely on the committees earlier in the webcast, it's really true, and the LSTA Advisory Committee is a hard-working committee. They have a lot of fun at this meeting talking about what are we trying to achieve with this money and how can we do it. And these are two changes that have flowed directly out of those discussions. So we're adding an easy digitization grant. This is to help libraries develop their own capacity for digitization. We help libraries, uh, we fund the North Carolina Digital Heritage Center at UNC, and they help libraries digitize their collections, but they don't particularly teach these libraries how to digitize those collections. So if you're interested in increasing the staff capacity for this, then this is the grant category that you would be interested in uh, following up on. These as easy grant categories are lower dollar, $5,000 to $25,000. If you're looking at a huge digitization project, then you definitely would be more interested in the project grant under digitization. Now this new one, the easy innovation, I just love this. This is, uh, I call this the Shark Tank grant. What we want to do is to allow libraries to express themselves because they know what's innovative. You all have interesting, fun things that you want to try out. So this is a, your chance. The way we're going to um, uh, accept these grants and consider them is completely different. So you get a chance to actually sell the LSTA Advisory Committee on your innovative idea, a la Shark Tank. So at libraries will be able to give a brief, high-level description of their idea to the state library. We want to make sure it fits, once again, within the federal guidelines for these grants. Um, selected applicants will be able to work up a pitch that they then can come and deliver to the LSTA Advisory Committee in next spring. And travel expenses for those pitches will be covered by the state library. The sky is the limit in those pitches, and we think it's going to be very interesting and fun for both the applicants and the LSTA Advisory Committee. So why are we taking this uh, unorthodox approach? Because and when we were discussing this, it seemed to us that the stifling paperwork that can sometimes be a part of grant applications was in direct conflict to the innovation that we were hoping to spark in libraries and among all of you. So we want to have an innovative application method that will match the innovation inherent in your ideas. So these will all be announced formally uh, very soon. Um, I don't have the date on me right now, but keep an eye on the LD blog. You'll see it there first. Moving on, I would like to catch you up a little bit about the NC Cardinal project. Uh, this project is sort of moving out of its infancy into teenagehood, I think, because we're seeing, uh, we're encouraging and getting a little more self-governance. The, um, the 
number of libraries are uh, there are enough libraries who are part of it now and they're starting to talk among themselves and taking a little more ownership for things so uh, our uh, project director has formed three task forces the cataloging task force is discussing our deduplication process project and some other things as well it's record enhancement authority verification so they've got a lot to talk about the governance down at the bottom the governance committee is discussing creation of bylaws and a membership structure and how are we going to work going forward and then there is the resource sharing committee and there I don't know that they've had a recent meeting they've just been set up but uh, we think they're going to have a lot to talk about as well. Uh, the latest library to join Cardinal, effective July 18th of this year, was the Albemarle Regional Library. Here's some interesting data about Cardinal. Uh, over 55,000 items have moved around among Cardinal libraries, and that's the last three months. That was actually May, June, and July. Over 1.4 million items have checked out, 16,000 new patrons, and over 8 million circulations to date, and that is since June of 2011. And that's when Cleveland County came on as the very first NC Cardinal Library. If you're interested in learning more about Cardinal or talking to the project director, there's information about her right there. That is Tanya Procrim and that's her email address. And if you miss any of these URLs or names, you can always email or call me and I'll be glad to uh, tell you who, who and what they are because I am moving fast and I know that. Okay, so here's that EDGE initiative that I was talking about earlier. North Carolina has been selected as one of seven or eight, maybe nine, uh, pilot states uh, for this project. And this is uh, an interesting um, project. I gave you the uh, bare bones outline. It's sponsored by a mishmash of organizations from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Urban Libraries Council, Public Library Association. And so uh, those groups, including, and I love this, the International City County Managers Association. So we're actually getting input from local government officials about what what do they want to hear about connectivity, about broadband, about the technology at the local library, and what is um, compelling to them in terms of a story about technology. So um, what happens is the public libraries assess themselves according to some benchmarks that have been developed by this EDGE group and then they make plans based on how they rate about where they need to put some efforts in, uh, on, into the technology in their library. So once these, uh, our libraries, I think we have ooh, 18 libraries participating, I'm kind of guessing it's about that many, public libraries participating this year. They've completed the assessment at this point and are making their plans then this will be open to all public libraries in the state next year. And as I alluded earlier, um, it, the unintended benefit of this project is that communication piece with your local government officials. That has proven to be very um, compelling and a huge benefit to the libraries who have taken part of this already. Data. Well, the annual public library survey was sent out July 15th. It's due September 15th, and we really appreciate all the hard work that public libraries put into completing this survey of data. Um, we're, we've got a new system for collecting it called LibPass, and uh, Joyce Chapman is the head of that program. She manages all of the data and the data analysis programs that we have going at the state. She, uh, you can see her email there. She is going to be doing um, a series of webinars, and I'll give you more information about those in a minute. Joyce is a crackerjack data person and uh, really knows her stuff, so she's a great person to have in this role. 
Um, she has put together a new public library data website, and the new data dashboards are especially interesting. Uh, Joyce did a presentation about the data uh, website at the uh, North Carolina Public Library Directors meetings uh, just last week held in Lake Lure, and everybody was blown away by how how compelling the documents that she assembled there might be or could be for them and for our future advocacy efforts and just for communicating again with local government. So I really encourage you to go and take a look at those. The library directors all were saying, can Joyce come, just come to my library for a couple of days? Just come and hang out and do this for me? So um, we're very excited about some of the data work that she's doing for libraries. Moving on to another new initiative, and I'm sure you've been reading about this in the news, it's the Affordable Care Act. We expect to see a lot of people in North Carolina signing up for the affordable. This is people who are uninsured with medical insurance, and um, according to the Affordable Care Act, they are supposed to sign up for insurance or pay the penalty on their taxes next year. Public libraries are uh, a partner or a, uh, obviously a prime place for people who don't have computers, people who don't have the know-how. Public libraries are where they go to sign up for uh, this insurance, to find out how to uh, sign up for it. So the state library is offering five workshops in September because the sign-up period begins October 1. And then, so we're moving very quickly on this. We are also setting up a website to help public library staff know what the, where people need to go to sign up for health insurance. And also, they were going to know what their library's health medical reference policy is. We can, we can direct people to the website where they can sign up for medical insurance. We can't advise you on what type of insurance you should really get. Uh, so I'm going to show you now a couple of screenshots of the uh, web pages, the LibGuides that we've created for the workshops. And these slides are going to serve as ready reference resources for library staff, and they will be introduced throughout the workshop, through these workshops, and uh, library staff will become very familiar with them. Of course, the site will continue to grow because this is a very fast-moving um, topic, as you know. Um, it's also going to include easily copyable content that you can post to your own library and your own library's website. Um, so I want to direct your attention to the tabs across the little, about the middle of the page, upper middle of the page. The Overview tab, Health Insurance Basics, North Carolina resources, brochures and handouts, information for library staff, and I think it's the discussion board is going to be very useful because that's where library staff can post something and say, hey, how is anybody handling XYZ? And you all can help each other. The brochures and handouts tab, I went and um, checked that, and um, actually I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm jumping ahead. Uh, health insurance basics. I uh, wanted to point out down the left hand side the resources there are like your primers. Helping consumers understand and use health insurance in 2014. So as somebody pointed out to me, some of the people signing up for this health insurance are going to be the very ones who may not know what an HMO is or the difference between a PPO and an HMO. I mean, this could be a rude awakening for some of our patrons. This is where you're going to want to start with that kind of information to help them wrap their heads around what all is involved in these health plans. Uh, by the way, we have some wonderful partners on this site, including uh, the NC, UNC Health Sciences Library, uh, the Department of Health and Human Services here at the state level, so uh, we're not doing this ourselves. Brochures and handouts, if you look at um, orders and materials in bulk, you have to apply and explain why do you want these materials in bulk. 
if you explain that you're a library helping your patrons, you will be approved. Um, it's fairly standard. You can see some of the brochures that they have, and you can order these in uh, larger numbers to hand out to your patrons. When I went in and looked at it in more detail, uh, there wasn't a whole lot that would be really useful. I'm thinking they're trying to catch up just as fast as we are, too. So um, application forms are actually on this page under application forms, under order materials in bulk. So um, we're, this is a real classic case of you're building the plane as you're taxiing down the runway. We are moving as fast as we possibly can with this. And um, I know you are too. So we'll just dive in and hope to do the best we possibly can for the people in North Carolina who are going to badly need this service. So I'm moving on now to the Center for the Book. And we have a new Let's Talk About It program called Muslim Journeys, American Stories. If, you, if your public library would like to sponsor uh, a Let's Talk About It program, whether this one or another one in our re repertoire, you can contact Carolyn Allen, Program Coordinator for Let's Talk About It at the North Carolina Humanities Council. They are the entity that sets up the scholars who will actually come and talk to your patrons <coughs> in these programs. The State Library will supply the books that you need for those programs. If you've never done one of those, called the Friends of North Carolina Public Libraries. And they are getting ready for their annual meeting in October at the Durham County Public Library. Please encourage your friends to join this group and to attend this meeting. They, I've, I went to several of their spring uh, regional meetings last year. And it's just the high energy, good-hearted people who just adore libraries. Who wouldn't want to go to a meeting of people like that? The, Friends Groups is also sponsoring our jo uh, Joseph Bethanti, our Poet Laureate, on a <laughs> at a program at NCLA this fall called On the Same Poem. He is a lovely man, and I am sure that's going to be a lovely program, and I would hope to want to attend that one myself. If you want information about either of those, you can talk to Molly Westmoreland. So what else is going on? Well, here are some initiatives that are underway and when I am talking about these it's they resemble a stoplight so you got green and you got amber and then you got red so let's look at what we've got here the green is the ebook task force we are continuing to explore options this is uh, a really hard Nut to crack. I'm sure you know that if you've been reading American Libraries or Library Journal or even just the local newspaper. We don't actually have the funds to do anything uh, with ebooks right now, so we're just exploring options, working very closely with NC Live, and there is a task force <coughs> of willing public librarians who've stepped up to the plate to advise us. I think we're just waiting for that market to mature a little bit more before we can really dive in. Um, <clears throat> the AMBER project is the Affiliate Libraries Committee. We have public libraries in the state who do not receive state aid, and we wanted to take a look at some of those libraries to see if they were interested in receiving state aid or if there was what would be uh, in the best interest of all the residents of North Carolina when it comes to these libraries. <coughs> Obviously, some are really effective libraries, wouldn't even know that they didn't receive state aid, while some others are might be more accurately termed book collections. We are moving very slowly in this area because we hear from the library directors, don't come riding into our county on your white horse to rescue us when we don't need rescuing. So. We're approaching this one library at a time, and we're going to be trying to follow the Hippocratic Oath, which is first 
do no harm. Moving on to the red light, unfortunately, that is the Petting Zoo Task Force, which was a, a seemed like a good idea at the time. We were going to encourage library school students to partner or intern at their local public libraries to provide digital literacy training for patrons. It just isn't going anywhere. And it, it's not that people don't want it to go anywhere. There's just There doesn't seem to be any real energy or um, interest behind the idea. So I'm just going to let that one die a, a, a kindly death. I'm going to take him off life, life support and just say, we tried. Nobody was really into it. And that is fine. We'll move on to other things. And one of the things that the state library staff have moved on to is this review of the state aid formula. This is a, a list of the state aid formula review committee members. Our current formula is 30 years old. It's just a little bit creaky. It's working all right, but um, it became clear in the last round of the state budget that, you know, couldn't we do a better job? We heard that from the state budget office. So we said, well, hey, we'll look at it. There's no harm, no foul in doing that. What's happened so far is that this committee has met twice. We've gotten absolutely fabulous advice from our advisors, three advisors to the committee, from UNCG Anthony Chow from the School of the Government, um, David Brown and Robert Bergen, independent library consultant. But we have not been able to come to a decision yet. The committee has discussed the importance of a hold harmless resolution. We really don't want to come up with a great new formula and have big losers and big winners. We don't think that's in the best interests of anyone. We are going to have another meeting on September 24th. I will continue to keep you abreast of this. I don't. We may well come out of this saying, hey, we like what we have, or we may come out with a new formula. Stay tuned, and you will see. Um, we have a couple of scholarships that the State Library is offering this fall. And the first one is we're offering 10 scholarships to the Association of Rural and Small Libraries Conference in Omaha, Nebraska. Their last conference was here in Raleigh, and we sent a ton of library staff members to this conference, and they loved it. So uh, we want to continue to support this going forward because it really is tailored to the small public library. It's just, it's delightful. If you've been to any conferences where you're totally cowed by the size and all the academic libraries, then this is the place for you. We received 17 applications for these 10 slots, and these are the people who will be going. We also had North Carolina library staff recently elected to the ARSL board. These are people who became so enchanted with it after the Raleigh conference that they decided they wanted to get involved. So I'm glad to see that it's a great way to get involved in a national organization rather easily. So if you're interested, stay tuned. We'll be funding more of these um, next year when the ARSL meets somewhere in the Northeast, I believe, is where they're going to be. Of course, a big one here in the state is the North Carolina Library Association Conference. We are funding app, uh, scholarships, 50 scholarships to this conference. We have uh, received, uh, let's see, how many applications do, oh, there it is, it says 95. We're going to cover conference registration and hotel costs for three nights. The, uh, the conference is in Winston-Salem. We've closed the uh, application process and should be announcing very soon who these 50 scholars are going to be, who's getting these scholarships. We may have already done it. In fact, I've been out of town, y'all. Uh, so what we're not covering is the pre, any pre-conference author lunches, your transportation to and from, and meals and other incidentals. But just getting the hotel and registration covered is a pretty big deal. So what else have we got going on? Let's talk about continuing education. We're ramping up on our continuing education. 
and more information about everything that I'm getting ready to talk about will be posted on the train station site. Do all of you know about the train station site? If not, let us know and we will uh, let you know where that is. That's where all of our continuing education workshops are posted. So some of our fall webinars about data, you can see what they are here. These will all be presented by uh, Joyce. They're on Wednesday, so we're calling them Wednesday webinars. And those will continue to be offered next spring as well. Uh, the great thing about these webinars is if you miss it, say you really wanted to hear using numbers to tell your story, then uh, once the webinar has actually been held, it will be recorded and the recording will be posted to YouTube. So all is not lost. You can go back and see it that way. Um, so just to remind you, LibPass on December, December 11th, LibPass is replacing Bibliostat as the state library's data gathering tool. So some people may want a little help in discovering what, what some of the things are that they can do with their data once it's been entered into LibPass. So that's what that one is about in December. We also have a lot of face-to-face -face workshops lined up, and I haven't even tried to get all the data in here. We've got dates on most of these. Uh, we've got locations. So I'm just going to give you the high-level overview, and you can go to the train station to learn more. We've got more LibGuides workshops. Uh, people just love that resource, and we're using it a lot here at the State Library, too. We've got Get Started with LibCal, which is the calendar portion of LibGuides, and then we have an advanced workshop for LibGuides. We're doing NC Live Basics and Intensive Customer Service, which is going to be a Train the Trainer session. Uh, for more information on any of these, you can contact Kelly Brannock. Uh, registration for all of these face-to-face -face workshops will go live on the train station by September 1. They're also going to be announced or have been announced in the LD blog and our listservs. Uh, we have a continuing education advisory committee, and they have uh, advised us in all of these workshops. I wanted to welcome two new members to that committee, or the SEAC as we call it, Martha Sink from Alamance County Library, and I don't have the name of the other person, sorry. So anyway, one new member, and we will, um, we're always looking for good candidates to serve on these committees, as I said before. Well, the big news in North Carolina this fall is the NCLA conference in Winston-Salem. We are all very excited, and there are going to be a lot of state library sessions at this conference, so let me run through those for you right now. We're going to be sponsoring a pre-conference, Fundamentals of Grant Writing. And this is going to involve both Ray Oldham, our LSTA advisory, or our LSTA consultant, I guess. And uh, inter she's the person who interfaces with the advisory committee. And Joyce Chapman, our data analysis consultant. So this is going to be a very interactive day. And in the morning, we're going to talk about grant writing tips, understanding your funder, this is going to be specific to the State Library's LSTA grant. So if you're interested in a project grant or even an easy grant and you want more tips and techniques about how to do it and how to do it well, increase your chances of getting funded, then you might want to attend that morning session. The afternoon session is going to talk about input, inputs, outputs, outcomes, and plan, how to plan your evaluation for an LSTA grant. This will include, both of these sessions are going to include examples of common mistakes that we have found over the years. So if you're seriously wanting to uh, come in for an uh, LSTA grant and you haven't written one before, this is the way to go. I would start here for sure. Some other sessions that are going to be held during the conference by State Library staff are, as you can see. So um, 
impact of children's services is going to have a big data component. Um, the EDGE initiative, you can find out more. I would encourage anybody who isn't one of the 18 libraries in the pilot project in this state to maybe think about sending someone because uh, it, this will, project will be open to all public libraries come January 1. And this will give you some background information about that program before it even begins. There's the Joseph Bethanti program on the same poem. Using data to tell your story. This is similar to uh, the session that Joyce Chapman just did for the public library directors. So I think that one is going to be very popular, maybe standing room only, just because of the buzz about the session she's already done for them. LSTA Grant Success Stories by Ray. And then, of course, Laurie Special is doing a session two. That's not all, though. We've got, I love this, Reader's Advisory for Nonfiction. That's Steve Case works in our Government and Heritage Library. The Serial Seas, two more of our staff. Genealogy programs. We're doing a lot of genealogy programming out of the State Library. Um, and you know, we're available to come to your county, too, if you want to have a program. We work a lot with local genealogy societies. Um, Beyond Wikipedia, free resources from the Government and Heritage Library, or GHL as we call, call it. I think that's a really underutilized resource. I'd be, um, I'd be surprised if you didn't find something that they could do for you that would be helpful. Uh, presenting the new NC Echo, that's going to be really interesting for digital people because when North Carolina joins the Digital Public Library of America, or DEEPLA, NC Echo is going to be our entree. That's how we're going to get our resources into DEEPLA. So if you have any interest in that digital subject, this could be an interesting project for you, I mean, program for you. Uh, and Michelle runs our digital information management program downstairs in the Government and Heritage Library. So you really want to meet her if you're interested in digital things. And a great way to do that would be to attend her program. And of course, I'm going to give my next State Library update in two months. It's going to be delivered in person at the NCLA conference. Woohoo! So. Um, I'm looking forward to it because I sometimes it gets boring to do it by webinar. And that, I moved pretty fast, that concludes my remarks. So my questions now for you all is, are, what, what did I not cover? Was there something you were looking for in terms of information that you want me to address? Just give me a shout and let me know. Uh, you can just type it in the chat. And I'll be happy to answer any question I can. OK, Mary is typing. If anybody's got ideas of how to build interactivity into this, I think I need to have little Little raise your hand, things. Uh, Mary, certainly. You know what happens? Every time I do one of these, I post the slides on the State Library website. Now, um, finding them on the website, that's something different. Let me run and look and see if I can get the URL real quickly and post it for you all. Um, they're not going to be up there today because. Uh, we're zipping right into other things the minute this webinar is over, but we'll get them up when we can. I'm uh, just going to see. Yes, if you go to About. No, that's not it. Wait a minute. I'm trying to. Oh, here it is. Okay. It's under. Here it is. It's under News. And not only are. There you go. Not only are these bi-monthly webinars posted, but I also post monthly reports, the same monthly reports that I submit to 
the secretary of the Department of Cultural Resources um, are posted there as well. So you can check those at any time. So if you check back at some point tomorrow and you go to webinar, you should be able to see this. And many of them are also, I think these are also put on YouTube. I, that just sends chills down my spine, but um, so yeah, there they are. So we've got, if you go to that URL, there's two things you can get under there. One is State Library of North Carolina monthly reports for every month, and then the bi-monthly webinar, and you can go see, access those recordings anytime. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Thanks for coming and asking a question. Anybody else? Ginny, I'm glad this is going to be helpful for you, too. Okay. Oh, thanks, Tracy. Thanks for coming, y'all. It was a small but dedicated group. That means the world. So if no other, oh, Becky's typing. I missed you at PLDA, Becky. Thank you. Yeah, you and Jenny need to think about coming to that. I don't know if you're coming to NCLA, but if you are, that storytelling with data would be a great program for you to attend. Yeah, Wanda's typing. Oh, there's the YouTube. Oh, geez. Thank you, Wanda. <laughs> Okay, great. I'll see you there then. All right, everybody. I think we're finished. Thank you so much for signing up. And thank you even more, though, for your interest in what we're doing. And, and I swear, we couldn't do it without you. So I'm really, I'm always pleased to have anybody who wants come to these things. And I'll hope to see you again sometime.